we're here in Hanson Aggregate's great super quarry, the, the Needingworth Quarry, which extends for 700 hectares on both banks of the River Great Ouse and where the Cambridge Archaeology Unit of the University of Cambridge has been excavating for the last 25 years. Because it was straddling both banks of a major river in prehistory, we wanted to just to look at the status of it as a river. When was it serving as a communication corridor? When was it serving as a territorial divide? The thing is, this is the point where the River Great Ouse deboshes into the fen. And what we very quickly found is that there wasn't one river, but many. There was a whole myriad of paleo channels. The whole thing was very delta-like, with major islands in the floodplain. Um, so that the whole picture became very, very uh, complicated very, very quickly. Now, the whole side of a paleo-environmental study that's gone on here over the years has taken on almost an important role as basically has the archaeology itself. Um, which has a nice serendipity to it in as much as that it's now, the landscape is being restored um, and about half of it's been done already um, as Britain's largest man-made wetland bird reserve, particularly in this case for the, the restoration of bittern numbers. So over is a, a really interesting site, a very important site for paleoenvironmental reconstruction because we are inside like a very wide valley that was created by the river Ouse over thousands and thousands of years. And what happened is like as the river migrated from one point of the valley that is in the east to the other point of the valley to the west over uh, roughly like 10,000 to uh, 25,000 years, have left scars in the landscape. And each scar, each one of these basins, created a small space where uh, pollen and other types of evidence are telling us something about like the large changes in the landscape could be preserved. So because we are in this massive quarry, this like, enormous quarry, uh, we have the chance to actually excavate uh, these channels that are like, very, very large. That are, some of them have, like, are like 100 meters wide and look for this particular evidence in order to connect it to what we know about the archaeology, like the mounds or uh, the habitation or uh, the little bits and pieces that we're finding that are connected to archaeological, uh, specifically archaeological remains. Um, so these, this Neolithic pit cluster is very typical of Neolithic activity in over at that time. So it was 3000 BC, you had people moving around in groups, hunting and gathering, and setting up small sites of activity where they might have been skinning animals or storing grain, um, and yeah, resting before moving on elsewhere in the landscape. Near my hand is a Neolithic axe, which has been polished in the front, which is what gives it that shiny reflective sheen. It was found in a Neolithic pit, which was either used for getting water from, i.e. a well, or was a place for storing grains and cereals, which is what one of our environmental samples showed. Okay, here we are in an, one of the early Bronze Age barrows that we finished excavating. So this one is probably dated around 1800 BC. But what is interesting in it is the changes in cremation. So in the primary burial, which was in the center, we had a buston type cremation pyre, where what it was is that you had this large pit, about a meter, meter 30 long, 60 centimeters wide, where they had actually built the pyre on top of the pit, put the body in a crouched position on top of the, the pyre wood, and then burnt it, and then basically the body dropped down into the pit. And so we had it in its, um, the, the complete body in its various remains as it dropped in the side of the red scorched pit. Now beside me here is the one secondary burial, but this one is particularly interesting in that what it consisted of was two collared urns, which is the characteristic pottery of the type, put together joined, so almost like a cocktail shaker, and then absolutely full of human bone. The cremation pyre for burning the, what is probably two individuals, didn't occur here, it occurred somewhere else and they've brought the remains here. And that's all going to be particularly interesting for the sense of what selection process they did, what size of bone they decided to pick up, because they're not going to pick up every bone splinter, but the larger identifiable chunks they've put into, the, into these 
collared her, and they've sealed the one, put the other on top, uh, inserted it inside the other, um, and almost carrying it like a picnic hamper full of bone to deposit in this, presumably on some kind of at least perceived ancestral re relationship of who was buried here. What we have here is a uh, Middle Bronze Age uh, cremation, and at first glance, it looks like a big old jumble. What we see in this half is, in the most, the lower half of the body. What we see in this half is the upper body, the ribs, some skull elements, uh, some fingers, but it's not a complete distinct division because we are seeing uh, bones like the uh, back of the heel here, which is the calcanus. This is most likely a female, and uh, I can tell that by taking um, a measurement of um, a couple of bones that I can see. Uh, now, I didn't do this here. I did it in uh, the CT uh, imagery that we took um, when we scanned it. Um, and I've been able to uh, determine uh, through the measurement of ephemeral head that it's most likely a female. Behind me has been a totally unexpected discovery that just came up in the, our, our stripping of the, in the quarrying area. And we're at right on the side of one of the big beds of the main Neolithic paleo channel of the River Ouse. And we're in some small channel off the side of this. Um, and what we're getting in this case, it's, it's quite late in that it seems to be Middle Bronze Age from the, the one bit of pottery that's come up so far. We're waiting to get the radiocarbon date from it. Um, but what we have is a small side channel, the river, which is just packed full of timber. Now, a lot of it is natural timber. It's come down drifting with the river. But there's also sequences of uprights which seem to line the side of this channel and then also seem to be a sequence of fishing weirs that went across it and also a fish trap. Um, so interesting in terms of its, the intensification of the, how intense the usage is of it. Um, so far, there's some interesting bits of wood, worked wood from it we'll have a look at, um, but very little. It's no sense of anybody actually living at this point. It's coming somewhere where they come into the landscape basically to fish as far as one can see at this point. But a very exciting discovery and again, creating uh, a lot of insight into Middle Bronze Age woodworking technology. So on top of like these layers that we think are connected to uh, the, um, a very late incursion of the ocean into the Fen Basin, we have the deposition of wood that has like very clear, uh, very clear marks of having been used by humans at some point. So we can connect all the, these and chain the larger scale, which is the environment, with the micro scale, which is sort of the human scale. This area is really packed through, so we, we have to pick apart lots of pieces, look for patterns in the material, and try and find out what people were doing here, because it's clear that there was a lot of activity taking place around the channel. Um, and what we've been finding so far is that as we take the pieces apart, we're beginning to see a pattern, and we're seeing some evidence of some probable fish weirs, um, which suggests that a lot of this activity might be related to um, creating small uh, hurdle structures out of woven wicker panels. Um, putting these into the river in order to funnel the fish towards traps. Um, and this is a, a really interesting opportunity to explore this and to, to look at an area where they've clearly been fishing in maybe quite an intensive way over a period of time and because there's a lot of material that's built up in this area. So in amongst the detritus and the debris, we found a couple of artefacts, um, which are super interesting finds. Um, we found a fragment of a wooden a bowl or a wooden container. Um, and this is a really rare and valuable find because it's really unusual to find um, wooden artefacts from the occupation context in, in British prehistory. Um, as well as that, we've also got some artefactual finds that might relate more to the river itself. So we have a fragment of a broken up log boat. Um, the boat probably, uh, was abandoned and came into pieces and then fragments of it were washed down and got caught in the area of the weirs. So we can see that this is actually part of the uh, bow um, or closed end, front closed end of the boat. Um, so the, uh, the bottom of the boat would be here and we can see the flat grain here and as it moves into this area we can see it becomes wider um, and it's been carved and shaped, the grain carries up here, to create this closed higher end. Um, we were looking at a Bronze Age wood mass and we found quite a few interesting things. Uh, and here we have some, uh, some animal bones, these are some, uh, some bird bones. 
possibly mallard, uh, duck that is, um, and um, they're of interest because they show us what, the, what animals were in this channel or in this environment when people were living here and what animals they may have used as well. Uh, the fens at the time were very rich uh, uh, wetland environment and uh, people would have, despite being farmers, would have hunted and fished uh, in, these, in these areas, in these parts as well. Um, this bit of pottery doesn't look like much, to be honest, uh, but it's quite important to us because we, we can identify this as being Middle Bronze Age um, and that is very important because it gives us a, uh, a time period for this, uh, for this wood mass. Uh, so Middle Bronze Age being about 1500 BC. We've done a number of initiatives over the years with the RSBP, most notably in the northeastern sector of the quarry. This would have been about 10 years ago where there's a large, the, the ancient beds of Willingham Mere, which was a huge freshwater lake that had formed in the late Bronze Age from about 1000 BC. Um, we had a digging environment initiative where members of the public had come and to spend a week um, digging through the lake beds, not for the point of view of archaeology, but just to experience the sense of the bird and the animal remains that were being recovered, but also the fall, fallen forest. And that was quite successful. So there, there is very much this, um, it's a case where archaeology and paleo-environmentalism is going very much hand in hand here.